Welcome to Mr Chalk's Revision Tips. In this video, we will look at chromosomes, the stages of meiosis, and how it leads to genetic diversity. So meiosis is a type of cell division that results in four daughter cells, each with half the number of chromosomes of the parent cell. So some key things to think about throughout are the chromosomes, the stages of meiosis, and how that goes and leads to genetic diversity. So meiosis in humans is a division process that takes us from a diploid cell, so one with two sets of chromosomes, to a haploid cell, so this is a cell with only one set of chromosomes. So meiosis is a process where a single cell divides twice to produce four cells containing half the original amount of genetic information. During meiosis, one cell divides twice to form four daughter cells. These four daughter cells only have half the number of chromosomes. Whereas mitosis involves the division of the body cells, while meiosis involves division only in sex cells. The division of cells occurs once in mitosis but twice in meiosis. So during prophase 1, chromosomes condense, the nuclear envelope disintegrates and the nucleolus disappears and spindle fibre formation begins as in, well similar to the prophase of mitosis. The difference in prophase 1 is that homologous chromosomes pair up forming bivalence. Something else uh, important to know that's different from mitosis is that something called crossing over takes place. So sections of DNA or sister chromatids become entangled during crossing over. Now break off region sometimes results in in the exchange of DNA. The point at which chromatids break and the region are called chymasper. So when exchange occurs, this forms recombinant chromatids with genes being exchanged between the chromatids. The genes being exchanged may be different alleles of the same gene meaning the combination of alleles on the recombinant chromatids will be different from the allele combination on either of the original chromatids. Genetic variation arises from this or these new combinations of allele, so the sister chromatids are no longer identical. Metaphase 1 is the same as metaphase 1 in mitosis except that homologous pairs of chromosomes assemble along the metaphase plate instead of individual chromosomes. The orientation of each of these homologous pairs on the metaphase plate is random and independent of <coughs> any other homologous pair. The maternal or paternal chromosomes can end up facing either pole. So this is called independent assortment and can result in many different combinations of alleles facing different poles. Anaphase 1 is different from anaphase of mitosis as the homologous chromosomes are pulled to opposite poles and the chromatids stay joined up to each other. Telophase 1 is essentially the same as telophase in mitosis, so the chromosomes assemble at each pole and the nuclear membrane reforms around the chromosomes, the chromosomes uncoil. Prophase 2, so in prophase 2 the chromosomes which still consist of two chromatids condense and become visible again. The nuclear envelope breaks down and spindle fibre formation begins. 
So during prophase one, the chromosomes condensed, the nuclear envelope disintegrates, and the nucleolus disappears, and spindle fibers go and join up. So the difference is that now the homologous chromosomes pair up, forming bivalence. Unlike in anaphase one, anaphase two results in chromatids of the individual chromosomes being pulled to opposite poles after the division of the centromeres. So the same as in anaphase of mitosis. The chromatids assemble at the poles at telophase two, as in telophase of mitosis. The chromosomes uncoil and form chromatin again. So the nuclear envelope reforms and the nucleolus becomes visible. Genetic variation is increased by meiosis. So during fertilization, one gamete from each parent combines to form a zygote. Because the recombination and independent assortment in meiosis, each gamete contains a different set of DNA. The production of unique combination of genes in the resulting gamete forms a zygote. So there are a few things in meiosis that increases genetic variation. So first we've got crossing over. So the points at which homologous cross over and exchange genetic material are chosen more or less at random and they will be different in each cell that undergoes meiosis. If meiosis happens many times, as in humans, crossovers will happen at many different points. You get random orientation of homologous pairs. So the random orientation of homologous pairs in metaphase one allows for the production of gametes with many different assortments of homologous home chromosomes. In a human cell, the random orientation of the homologous pairs alone allows for over a million different types or possible gametes. When we lay crossing over onto the top of this, the number of genetic combinations that one person can make or any other person can make means they almost or effectively becomes infinite. Thanks for watching.